the tides have turned for this sail. Looks like we got a little weather coming at us. To the windshield. Do we shoot this or do we just jump it? We just couldn't hold a course. Oh, there's a cool little rainbow. We're really having to pinch tight. I don't know if we're gonna make it. This is us sailing the fast track south during hurricane season right through Hurricane Alley. Joel, you gotta go forward, the sheet's underneath the wire. We will experience great sailing. Ooh, doggy. We got the wind on the beam. Squalls and unpredictable weather. We definitely got some, uh, some rain, some squally looking weather. All right, it's hitting us. Gorgeous sunsets and times when we lose all wind. There is no wind at all. Sailing the Fast Track South, part three. As a matter of fact, we're Hi, my name is Joel. I have a deep desire for wild adventures, traveling and building human connections. Sailing and boat life has provided that and more. Thank you for subscribing and a huge thanks to my patrons for providing me the opportunity to create and share. Fish on, let's go, Mike. It's a little one, whatever it is. Mike saw these uh, weed, like big weed bunches. What do you call them? Just sargasso mats. Sargasso mats. And so he asked Captain to take it off of autopilot and just skirt along the side of them. So we just did that and sure enough, he's got a fish on. Uh -huh, a little amberjack. Yeah, a little amberjack. Oh, yeah. There we go. Hey. Yeah, they're wormy, otherwise, he'd have been dinner. Uh, very, very good. When the engine is running, it uh, does not leak water a drop. We're getting our wave weather report. Midnight, 10 knots out of the east, true east. Woo! And then in the morning, it should pick up to 15. East, true east. Then the only place we got a problem is he says, and he says it's fractional. When we get within 10 miles or so of Luperon, that the wind is gonna go a little bit to the south of the east. So we'll just make sure as we're sailing, we're a little bit high on our mark so that as it goes around, we're no problem. But midnight tonight, 10 knots out of the east. So we'll just stay on this tack until the next watch at least. Might as well get as much easting in as possible. We're good. And there's no trop, there's still no sign no, of- Nothing. No tropical nothing? No, no tropical nothing. Thank you, Wade. Where did uh, our fisherman go? Uh, he went down below. Oh, there he is. Right. He's snacking. Here we go. Come, come, take a look. See that guy right there? We call, we call those the cockles. Oh, yeah. They are so thick. But the, it's like when you look at it, the binoculars, I think he just cut out doing it. But he'll have like, it looks like he's got six engines working. Wow. So, but he just stopped. Just as I say that, no. I, saw, I saw him put it down. This is a, a shot of Rome. If we were in the Navy, of the British Navy, they would give us a shot of every night as part of, as part of their salary. Okay. But we get a shot of Rome because we are finally to windward enough where we're going to end up taking a turn. <laughs> Supposedly at midnight, according to our weatherman and friend on the, uh, on the radio, Mr. Wade. So we got it. So to the windshield. Now do we shoot this or do we just count oh, no. them? It's a sipping room. It's a sip as slow as you'd like. To the windshield. To the windshield. To the ship. So it'll be four and a half days about? No. By the time we turn? Two days. Well, two days from there, from when we turn, but we've been at sea for four and a half days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so we're finally about to turn stuff. Right. Once we turn, it should go really quick. We do over 150 miles a day when we got some wind. Yeah. I mean, we and we've been stalling. We've not been pushing at all because we, we knew we had to wait for this wind, so it's good. Yeah. True East, baby. <laughs> yeah. We're almost to our to our point. Stay. All right, cheers. <laughs> Mike's having all the fun on his watch here. <laughs> well, what, what happened this time? <laughs> 
It's time uh, steering just got funky and ended up uh, it just it didn't feel right and so it was really stiff. So uh, got the captain, checked everything out, found a pair of sunglasses hung up in uh, the chain. Got the sunglasses removed, everything's good, everybody's happy, captain's back to bed and uh, we're on our way. So I guess the sunglasses were sitting up here and they just went Whoop, right down there. They're down laying in the chain around the sprocket. <laughs> so, You're like, that doesn't feel right. Nah, Something's nah, on the rudder. Yeah, it, uh, exactly, exactly. I love that there's still a pair up here. Uh, I just noticed that. And those aren't the same ones, so I'm like, uh, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll put these babies somewhere else. Yeah. Let's keep that clear. <laughs> Should be able to cut that motor and sail all the way in. I'm seeing some white caps, so that little adjustment gained us probably a knot. The sails were in kind of tight because we were really pinching and just trying to go as tight into the wind as we can. But now it has shifted out to the east, so we got the wind on a beam. So I'm just gonna toy with the sails, see if I can't get our speed up, and then throttle the motor down. And I'm seeing a little white caps, so I think the the tides have turned for this sail slash motor we have done a lot of motoring but that's okay with me you know we uh it is hurricane season we have a nice window of of no crazy weather and uh we we, we just we want to get this this ship home safe and sound in the dominican republic so we're gonna do what we can to get there in the window that we have because the weather can shift just quick out here. Morning, Mike. A little warm. Can you describe the excitement of finally heading south, getting the motor off, having a beam reach? What does it feel like? It's a good day. It's a good day heading home. Hopefully two days. Nice hot shower, be on firm ground again. Life is good. Enjoy your breakfast. We went ahead and killed the engine, trimmed the sails, and we're doing almost six knots, about 5.7, which is, which is great, and we're on a perfect heading. We worked so hard to go east for like, I don't even know, almost five days, I think, if I'm, if I'm not losing my mind. It's been almost five days, I'm pretty sure. So it was just our whole goal was to get east, to get to that 70 degree longitude, and then to just start heading south. Hopefully the winds, as of now, it is correct. We got winds off out of the east, and they're forecasted to stay from the east and steadily increase. So we should have a beam reach. Who would have thought we were gonna be sailing east and have a beam reach? But if you work really hard to get east, which is what we've done. We're way up, way north, but we're east. We should be able to have a good beam reach sail all the way into Luperon. So in theory, it makes sense. And it feels good to finally get that engine off. And it should it should stay up the re mo most of the trip, you know, if, if things, if things uh, go according to plan, which you know how that goes. Plans usually have other plans, right? But that's okay. That's what keeps life interesting and spicy and heartbreaking and sad and 
terrible. No, no, it's actually great. It's fun. I love that plans never work out. It's just, it's just so exciting. Like we got a little weather coming at us. Kind of surrounded by clouds here. Rain. Here we go. On the fence about this but we got the wind out of beam but it's gonna be 15 knots minimum and the autopilot just kept having a hard time with that spanker uh, holding course and we were just uh, it was nice to have the speed but we just couldn't hold a course um, with the autopilot we kept having to take over and captain I, I'm glad I'm glad you know it's up to captain and I was like all right you know whatever you decide he was really on the fence. Decided to just take the spanker down so we have an easier ride and if we get into any squalls or any, because there's definitely, there's definitely weather all around us. And we just called Wade and got the Wade weather report. And he said, you guys getting a bit of rain, are you? Yes, yes we are. We have been getting some rain. Uh, so yeah, I feel like, I feel good about this. We're gonna lose a little speed, but we're gonna be able to hold are heading a lot a lot easier and if winds pick up you know we'll be a little less overpowered so pretty cool huh the captain could drop that whole spanker all on his own he just had me turn into the wind and uh, it only took him 30 seconds to get that whole sail down and i'm going into uh my four hour shift Still doing seven knots too. We just have a lot more stability. We're not, you know, they call it the spanker because it spanks the boat around. That's that's what gives you steerage. You know, if you got to really maneuver in tight places, that sail will help you. But in this situation, we don't need it. Take a break, spanker. You've earned it. That's a beautiful sunset. Oh, there's a cool little rainbow on this end here. Oh, that's beautiful but there's also lightning and that is that is coming at us we got wind from the east which is that direction so all that weather is coming this way and i'm seeing lightning and clouds so we're going to be holding on to our butts uh, that is a beautiful rainbow though how cool is that a sunset on this end All right, the wind's doing some weird things. The sails are uh, fluffing a bit. Better. All right, I think we got something weird coming at us. Yeah, the winds have shifted. All right. That is pretty, but it, it kind of looks a little dicey. And now it's a double rainbow.
rolling into the night. Wow, that was that was a beautiful, beautiful sunset. Good show. Gorgeous. Alright. See what we get tonight. Okay, hit it. That's amazing. We make anything better? Oh yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, 160, 170. Okay. We had to pull the spanker back up in the middle of the night. Wind shifted it to our nose, so we had to tack. Now we're just going east. And we just didn't have any power without the spanker to, to fight into the wind. All right, it's getting dicey. But we thought on our feet, uh, that was fun pulling the spanker back up in the dark, but it's all done now. And I'll catch you up in the morning. All right, that's the end of my watch. We're actually, we're doing about four and a half knots and we're on a much better heading right now. Um, but still, we're really having to pinch tight and I don't know if we're gonna make it to loop run. We might we might end up hitting, hitting down uh, somewhere in Haiti and then having to motor up, motor sail, or maybe catch a little bit of the land breeze. Um, be able to sail up I don't know we'll see it's just it's just changing so frequently but yeah that was an interesting shift to say the least good morning well <laughs> we definitely got some uh, some rain some squally looking weather we're going it's coming right at us we are still fighting to go east. The wind shifted out of the south a little earlier than was forecasted. So the wind died down a little bit. We saw an opportunity to tack and turn the motor on because the wind's low and fight our way east because no doubt the wind will pick back up. And as we approach, it's supposed to get stronger. So we figure let's, let's try to get east in the in the lowest amount of wind as far as we can and then tack it when the wind picks up and we're really just trying to get to a point where our bearing is 182 which which means we can make it you know to loop run instead of coming in, coming in somewhere to the west in haiti somewhere and then motoring up the coast but all that that's coming right at us that's up when we're going. So I'm just keeping my eye on that and uh, enjoying the beautiful view, but it's a little, it's beautiful, but it's also a little dicey, those clouds. And that's just rain. You can see it's coming all the way down to the water, so. The Tales of Boab. Well, <laughs>